everyone. I'm going to bring the meeting to a start. Uh, so, welcome to uh, the Society Fire and Rescue Authority Audit Committee for the 14th of February. Nobody's late, we've only just started. Well done. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Where's the card? Sorry. If fire alarm goes, then we'll wait to the nearest fire alarm uh, exit. Uh, and follow the instructions of the officers and the fire marshals. Uh, the assembly point is across the car park. Uh, Smoking is not permitted in any of these buildings. Uh, the toilets are just further along the corridor across on the opposite side. Um, if you need to leave the meeting for any reason other than an emergency, you'll be required to switch off any recording equipment uh, and leave the meeting with all of your belongings. <coughs> if there's anyone present who has any items relating to a personal, private, or confidential or exempt information, then please ensure that those items aren't on display uh, until such time that they may be required. Uh, if <coughs> <laughs> the meetings will be uh, recorded, I understand. Uh, if any members have any objections to being recorded, uh, then please let me know. Uh, if you can switch your mobile phones to silent, uh, we'll, we'll let you cough, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm Councillor James Roberts, uh, I'm the chair of this meeting, and so I'll officially call the meeting open. Um, do we have any, uh, any apologies? <coughs> just just cancel the meeting? Okay, thank you. Are there any declarations of interest in relation to any of them? No? Okay. Do you have any uh, matters of urgency to attend to the agenda? Uh, there's no matters requiring the exclusion of the press and the public. Uh, so if we move on to the minutes of the last meeting. Anyone wants to raise anything from the minutes of the last meeting? No. So can we accept them as an accurate record? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, So, uh, <coughs> I understand that we're, uh, we're still waiting for some, uh, some officers. The external order, so. No. no. What it is, the external order to um, prepare the report, agenda item three, yeah. it's been an accident on the M62, it's a default to say they're going to be late. So, what I've suggested is. For item three to the end. <coughs> if you don't arrive by then, I'll cover the reports. Uh, or hopefully, they will arrive. So, if that's agreeable with members, I think that's what we're suggesting. Well, uh, members are okay with it, and we'll uh, alter the agenda to take item three at the end. Is that right? Okay? Yeah. So, item four then, the uh, financial review for 2018 19, April to December. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. Uh, so this report outlines the financial. <coughs> up for the period April to December 2018. It covers uh, the revenue budget and spend outlined the position on the budget spend for the day-to-day -day activities such as employee and other service run costs and their highlights in appendix A1 to A3. It covers cap the capital programme and spend outlining the current plan of investment in buildings, ICT, vehicles and other assets and spend to date in Appendix B and C outlined the updated programme and spend position. It highlights the authority's reserves that were created to fund specific projects and cover certain risks, such as higher than anticipated pay or price inflation, and that's in Appendix A4. And it covers a review of the Treasury <coughs> management performance against the approved strategy and considers any borrowing investments and the management of cash over the period. So I'll go through each of these updates in turn, starting with the revenue. Paragraph 7 to 12 confirm that the revenue budget remains consistent with the approved original budget of 59,701 and that approved revenue uh, budget saving options are being delivered as expected. For 
report has identified in paragraphs 13 to 14 that revenue spend is forecast to deliver a 3% or £1.85 billion saving against the budget. And this is due to one of savings and windfall grant income, as outlined on page 27 and the table on page 28. In line with the approach <coughs> outlined at the January Budget Strategy Day, members are asked to approve that this saving be used to increase debt repayments the minimum revenue provision as, a plan, as part of a plan to free up debt servicing budget in the future to allow investment back into frontline services. And officers will continue to try and deliver additional savings before the year end and members are asked to approve that any further savings be used to make additional debt repayments as well. So going on to capital, as per paragraph 15, Due in quarter three, uh, sorry, as per paragraph, paragraph 15, in quarter three, £3.123 million of amendments have been built into the capital programme. This is mainly due to a £3.5 million increase in the TDA refurbishment scheme and a reduction in vehicle spend of £0.672 million. The table at the end of paragraph 15 summarises the changes made in quarter three. And paragraph 16 provides some additional background information. The report appendix B and C outline the latest planned capital spend. Moving on then to reserves, paragraph 18 allow, outlines the movement in reserves in the quarter. £0.73 million has been drawn down to fund works on the new Solver Massey fire station that were originally planned for 2019-20 but will now be incurred in 2018-19 as building works are ahead of schedule. Appendix A4 outlines the movement on reserves in 2018-19 to date. So finally moving on then to Treasury Management. The performance of Treasury Management was consistent <coughs> with the approved Treasury Management Strategy for 2018-19. Paragraphs 22 to 27 outline the performance to the end of the third quarter. No new loans have been taken out in the year to date, and a breakdown of current investments is outlined in the table on page 33. At the end of December, the authority held £29.4 million of reserves, uh, sorry, investments. All investments are consistent with the approved investment strategy and within the limits outlined in paragraph 25. So members are asked to approve the use of the identified <coughs> 1.85 million revenue savings to fund additional debt repayments in the year, instruct the Director of Finance to continue to work with managers to maximise savings in 2018-19, and any further savings are to be used to make further debt repayments, and as part of the as part of a plan to free up future debt servicing budgets to allow investment back into frontline services. Uh, approve the amendments to the capital programme and note the planned use of the reserves. Happy to take any questions on the report, Chair. I mean, it's, it's through the building over there, the car park, and, and the plan hasn't yet been prepared. So our plan <coughs> will come back to members to approve, outline specifically what to, to be uh, done with that investment, and members will have, have an opportunity then, as you say, to determine whether or not that is an investment wish to approve or continue using the money for something else. But it'll basically be around improving, I think, the, the, the people who go and visit the station to make a more pleasant experience and to make sure the assets are Thanks, 
here. Uh, before I introduce the report, I've got Melanie from the Liverpool City Council. Internal order here. So if there's any detailed questions, I might have to refer to <coughs> Melanie. Uh, but I'll introduce the report. Um, the purpose of the report is to inform members of the work carried out by internal orders for the period April to December. Members approved the 2018-19 internal order plan at the meeting of the Audit and Scrutiny Committee in June 2018. And as per paragraph 6 of the report, the plan allocated 112 days out between a review of fundamental finance-based systems and specific project-based work streams. Appendix A, attached to the report, provides details of progress to date. Section 2 of the Appendix A outlines the completed audits, all of which found the work review had substantial control and compliance measures in place. And Section 3 of the Appendix A identifies audits that have commenced and are currently being progressed, and it includes some background to the planned audit work. It's important to note though most of the audit work that was carried out in the last quarter of the year, so it can fit in with external audit work on the robustness of the fundamental finance systems and test the operation of these systems based on workflow throughout the majority of the year. And the strategic project reviews want to review how these activities have operated for the majority of the year, hence most work is planned for the last quarter. A year-end report on the actual performance of internal orders against the plan and the findings will come back to this committee nearly summer 2019 for approval. <coughs> I'm happy to take any questions on the report. Are there any questions on the report? Uh, I have a question. Um, I was wondering how many uh, audit days were used in previous years? Yeah, it can vary to be honest here. What tends to happen, if a piece of work requires waiting before we commence it, what we do is we carry forward any unused days into the next year. Because what it means, in essence, is that that work still needs to happen. So we need to basically bring forward the days because we need 112 in each year to do that year's plan. So any under use gets brought forward, if that makes sense. And I think in 16, 17, I think we did we carry any. I think we did carry some forward, didn't we, to complete the work that hadn't been completed. That makes sense. But uh, 112 is uh, realistic based on previous year. Yeah, in fact, what, what we did uh, going back some years, and it's going to test me memory now, we may have had 130 days. So when we agreed the service level deal with Liverpool, obviously we're conscious of what we paid, it's the, just 35, 36,000. We reduced it some years ago because we felt 130 days was too much because the fundamental systems we have have been checked and checked and checked. And so we, based on a risk assessment, we can reduce those days. And that's something we do as part of when we consider future audit plans is what's the number of days we need? Do we need to increase it? Can we reduce it? So we have a discussion with internal audit and the senior leadership team on that risk. Thank you. Uh, if we discovered that we did need more audit days, we'd be able to quickly scale it up a bit. Yeah, obviously there's a, there's a resource side at the Liverpool City Council as a timing issue. But, I mean, I don't see there being a problem if we were to have another 20 days because of risk. You know, it, it would be a great deal of money we have to have time to pay the additional SLA. But we talked to Melanie and her team about how they could resource that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item six is the corporate risk register for September and November. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Uh, members will be quite familiar, I think, with the format of the risk register now, but just to, to remind everybody, the risk register is broken into um, several different sections, including budgets, legal aspects, sites and assets, technology, <coughs> procurement, and environmental, political, and staff type risks. So we um, can classify all the risks that we identify under those headings. Uh, we start the year off with a, an initial mitigation of those risks to, uh, to determine how to reduce the, the raw risk score, if you like, and then during the year on a roughly quarterly basis, uh, we require updates from members of staff as to how that mitigation process is working, whether there's more mitigation, whether the risk is increased or whether it's reduced. Uh, and we consider the, impl impl um, the impact and the likelihood of, uh, of those risks occurring. 
to, be, to um, apply a red and green rating and a, a risk score as well. So every quarter or so we report back to, uh, to this committee to, uh, to give you an update on our performance against the risks that we've identified in the risk register. The vast majority, with the exception of one, of those risks are either amber uh, or green. So we do manage to quite successfully mitigate the risk down to <coughs> a number of different actions. I'm happy to answer any questions. Anything else in the Any questions in the report? Are there any new risks that should be identified in the past? I don't think we have on this one. Uh, we did a, a while back, uh, we added Brexit as a risk or implications of Brexit, and the ranking for that is based more on the uncertainty than on any particularly identified risk. It's a bit unusual in that respect. So, from the I think the risk register is being monitored, but there haven't been any substantive changes in that. No. Okay. Uh, in that case, can I move that we uh, accept the report? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> It's simply to say to members that the work of the 2018-19, all the sort of financial statements has commenced. They're doing a bit of interim work at the moment at upstairs in the, in the accounting team. And at some point, the quote in March 2019, they will bring back a detailed plan of an approach to the 2018-19, all the sort of statements of accounts. Linked into that, then obviously in the next heading on the value for money, they're indicating in terms of the criteria that they will use to look for value for money. And they've bulleted three points informed decision making, sustainable resource employment, and working with partners and other third parties. And the initial assessment uh, is that they've not identified any risks, and however, they will report on their final findings as on a statement of accounts at the PR committee at the end of July. Because, because they're not available, the rest of it is about them trying to sell reports that we've done and just be members aware of it. You, you can certainly have a look at those um, documents and if, if our members want them, I'm sure we can agree something with Grant Thornton to get them to read and read. But I think the only real uh, information I've direct members is, say, page 12 to do the specific work that we're going to do regarding 2018-19. Statements of accounts, and it's it's a clean bill of health at this stage, as you would expect. <coughs> we just identify what we're going to do in the future. Okay. Are there any questions on this report? I noticed that the uh, report touches on the HMICFRS uh, inspection. Do you have a I As I understand the Chief, the, the tranche two that we're in, uh, that will be probably summer, early summer, but at the very earliest, because there's a lot of moderation needs to happen over several stages. I think the report that they're referring to here is to do with tranche one, and I believe that at SLT there was a discussion about maybe bringing that report back to members for information and, and seeing what the tranche one FRAs, what the findings were. Certainly think it'd be worth looking at. Okay, are there any other questions on this? No? Okay, we move that we uh, accept the report. Thank you. Thank you.